Hi, it's Thomas. Welcome back to Algebra 1. This is a follow-up video relating to the last lecture, which covered two techniques to solve quadratic equations, one factoring, two completing the square. And in the example for completing the square, which is shown on the board here, we solved to x equals 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 2. So here on the board I have the original equation as well as the solution. And I said at the end of the video, if you plug this solution back into the equation, 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2, or 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2, two different solutions, the equation will be true, it will equal 0. But that's not an easy thing to do, so maybe you gave it a try and you proved the formula. Maybe you gave it a try and you thought, I'm not sure exactly what to do from whatever step you got to. So why don't we do it together? Now what I mean by checking the equation, or what is the process of checking the equation to prove that this is a true solution? Let's on the let's create two sections of the board. We're going to first solve for x equals, or check the solution x equals 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2. And then we'll check the solution x equals 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2. In our original equation, x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. We substitute for x our solution. So 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2 plus 1 equals 0. Now let's work through the math and see what we end up with. 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2 squared means we're going to do the FOIL method. First outside, inside, last, multiplying 4 times. So our two first terms are 3 and 3. If I, let's, let's go ahead and write out this expression to see what does it mean 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2 squared. means this, 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2 times 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2. So the FOIL method says we're first going to multiply the firsts, then the outsides, then the insides, then the lasts. So we have four multiplications. The firsts, 3 times 3 is 9. Then the outsides, 3 times 2 times the square root of 2. And both of those are positive, so we have a plus 6 times the square root of 2. The insides, 2 times 2 times the square root of 2, times 3, both again the same sign, so another positive 6 times the square root of 2. And the lasts, 2 times the square root of 2 times 2 times the square root of 2. Now what's happening here, let's get our sign first. They're both positive, so we'll have a positive result. Now when we multiply 2 times 2, we have 4. And when we multiply the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, we have 2. So this is like multiplying 4 times 2, which is 8. And now we can do some combining here with, the, with this part of our equation. 9 plus 8 equals 17. And 6 times the square root of 2 plus 6 times the square root of 2 equals 12 times the square root of 2. Now we're not done because we have the, we have the second half of our equation, or the second half of the left side of the equation still to work with. So let's come down with this. We have minus 6 times, in parentheses, 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2. So that's going to be, we're going to multiply minus 6 times 3, and minus 6 times 2 times the square root of 2. We end up with negative 6 times 3 is negative, or minus 18, and negative 6 times 2 times the square root of 2 is minus 12 times the square root of 2. 
And we have one more term here. That's the plus 1 equals 0. Now we can clean up and see if this is true. Notice we have a plus 12 times the square root of 2 and a minus 12 times the square root of 2. Those are going to cancel each other out. And we're left with 17 minus 18 plus 1, which sum to 0, equals 0. And that shows that the, that proves that the solution is correct. Now you might think, well, 0 equals 0. I know that. If you had plugged in a solution that was incorrect, then you might end up with something like 7 equals 0, or the square root of 2 equals 0. And neither of those statements is true. The fact that we've arrived at a true statement is proof that the solution is correct. Let's do the same for the second solution. x equals 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2. This would be a similar process, but it's not the same solution, so let's check it. Now, plugging into our original equation, we have, again, looking at our original equation, x squared to begin. So now that's going to be 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2 squared, substituting the value for x. Minus 6x will become minus 6 times 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2, plus 1 equals 0. Now, I'm not going to work in as much detail as I did in our first check. I'm going to take a shortcut here in expanding or, or multiplying my 3 minus 2 times the square root of 2 squared. What I know is that I'm going to be multiplying my first terms. Those are both 3, 3 and 3. So when I multiply 3 times 3, I have 9. Now, I'm also going to be multiplying 3 and minus 2 times the square root of 2, and I would do that 2 times. So one, maybe an intermediate, not to take too much of a shortcut here, perhaps I'll write both of these out. I'm going to end up with minus 6 times the square root of 2, and if I do that twice, I have another minus 6 times the square root of 2, and then I'm going to multiply negative 2 times the square root of 2 times itself. And that is going to give me, as I saw in my first check, I end up with, because I'm multiplying two negatives, I'm going to end up with a positive. So the first part, I multiply in 2 times the square root of 2. Multiplying the 2's, 2 times 2, I end up with 4. And multiplying square root of 2 times square root of 2, I end up with 2. So this is like multiplying 4 times 2, which gives me plus 8. And now I can clean up here. 9 plus 8 is 17. And negative 6 times the square root of 2 minus 6 times the square root of 2 is minus 12 times the square root of 2. Let's look at our second term here in our equation. I'm going to multiply negative 6 times 3 and negative 6 times negative 2 times the square root of 2. Negative 6 times 3 minus 18. Negative 6 times negative 2 times the square root of 2. Negative times negative gives me positive 12 times the square root of 2. And then I'll bring down my third term. Plus 1 equals 0. And now combining negative 12 times the square root of 2 cancels with plus 12 times the square root of 2, and I'm left with 17 minus 18 plus 1, which equals 0, and yes, 0 does equal 0, and my second solution also checks out. Also, we've proven that that second solution is correct. So here we've taken the solutions from the previous video for the complete the square example of solving quadratic equations, that original equation and the solutions are on the left side of the screen. And the two equations we've just worked through, are the two calculations we've just worked through, are the proofs of each of those individual solutions. That's what it means to check your work and prove that your solutions are true.